Hey there, Fletch from All Things Overlanding here. On today's episode of the podcast slash vlog, I'm going to be talking about something that I really hope is like some solid information that will help a ton of you guys. Um, today I'm going to be talking about kind of my top five tips for how to video your own adventures. And what kind of made me think of this, what made me come up with this idea was, you know, when I first started doing this stuff, my intention was not at all to grow it into a YouTube channel or you know, to, to have a bunch of followers or anything like that really wasn't my intention when I started at all. I just wanted to, you know, I felt like I'd gone off-roading for, you know, several years and seen a bunch of really cool stuff and done a bunch of really cool stuff. And whenever I talked to my friends or family, they would be like, what? You camped in the woods for three days? That sounds terrible. And I wanted to convey to them, right, like the magic that is some of the sights that we get to see, some of the really awesome, cool, sometimes stressful, but sometimes amazing, like, off-roading that we get to do to get to that location to see that site or to find that perfect camp spot. Um, so again, that's kind of how my channel started. All right, so if you're new to the channel, basically what I do here is I put out a couple videos a week. Um, generally something like a podcast slash vlog like this that talks about overlanding content or, you know, do-it-yourself mods, that sort of thing. And then another video, which usually is like a gear review or, you know, something along those lines or a trip video. Um, so if you're into any of that stuff, I would love to have you as a subscriber. Click that subscribe button, click the bell to be notified when new videos drop. Um, join the conversation. I'd love to have you on any of my social channels or in the comments on this video. So thanks again for watching and now let's dive into it. All Things Overlanding is brought to you by Red Arc, power management solutions. Rugged bound supply company, rooftop tents, awnings, roof racks, and more. Overland Addict, premium overland gear. Last US bag, overlanding bags and equipment. Northology Overland, trips and a monthly overlanding magazine. All of these companies are really amazing, so I highly recommend you click through the links in the description below to learn more about each of them. All right, so as I mentioned, the whole intention of this video slash podcast today is to kind of walk you through, right, some of my tips that I've found really helpful that, that helped jumpstart me and that could also hopefully save you a bunch of time. Um, again, I've been doing this for a little around two years, not quite two years now. Um, so I'm by no means an expert, but I can definitely tell you all the mistakes I made along the way. And I can help you avoid some of those pitfalls by giving you some good information that will help you shoot better video. Um, so let's kind of start with topic number one or tip number one. Uh, my first tip is, you know, I, I know when I watched a bunch of overlanding videos, I started with like Expedition Overland, as many of us probably did. Huge, huge production, you know, dedicated vehicles full of camera gear and drones and all kinds of stuff, right? Dedicated people to operate that gear. Um, and then you watch like an, an action four-wheel drive or you watch um, Lifestyle Overland or, you know, any of those bigger channels. Those folks have been doing it for a really long time. Trail Recon, Primal Outdoors, right? Like they have most of them a background in videography, a background, background in photography, um, Oftentimes assistance, they have free gear that they get, you know, because of the size of their channel, that sort of stuff. Um, so the first thing is to sort of temper your expectations, right? And work with what you got. So that's tip number one, work with what you got. Um, again, I immediately was like, I need to buy a drone and I need to buy all this stuff and all these cameras. Um, I will place in the comments below links to all of my camera gear because most of it is really inexpensive and you could pick and choose, you know, what works best for you. Also, a lot of my stuff is self-contained. And what I mean by that is, like, I have a DJ Osmo, um, I'm looking for, I have a DJ Osmo uh, Action, which is like a GoPro. It's like my action cam. But the DJI Action is significantly cheaper than a GoPro, but still puts out really great quality video, has a really good, it's called Rocksteady, but a really good stabilizer built into it, software-based stabilizer. Um, and so it does a really great job of shooting trail footage and things like that. You can just throw it up on your rig, you know, with, it comes with some attachment points that you can, you know, stick to your hood or do whatever you want with it. Or you could buy some clamps and stuff and attach it to your vehicle and you can just capture the trail. That's, that's sort of step one, right? It's just using what you've got and recording stuff to get started. Um, you know, so, but that's all inclusive, right? You throw a memory card in that, you pop it on your rig and you're, you're set, you're recording. Um, you know, I use my phone a lot. Right now I'm recording on my iPhone 12. That's what I'm using right now to shoot this video. It's what I use to shoot the majority of my video. Um, again, you know, if you, if you did want to be a YouTuber or something someday, sure, you probably need to buy like a professional Sony camera or something like that, right? <clears throat> 
to kind of get out there and and become more professional. Um, but that's not really my goal, right? Like my goal is to be authentic and to provide you guys with opinions based on what I've learned and, and information based on what I've learned to, again, try and shortcut you guys around some of the pitfalls that can happen with shooting video, with overlanding, with all that sort of stuff. Um, so, so again, work with what you got. If you need recommendations for stuff that's just like a, you pick up a camera and you slap it on your rig or you pick up a camera and you put it on a tripod, I will put links to all that stuff down in the description below because, again, I love all my gear. I've really refined it at this point, so I'll just give you the good stuff that I use now and not any of the old junk that, that really didn't work so well. So check those out in the description below to see what may be helpful for you. Um, like my DJI, my DJI Osmo Pocket is literally one of my favorite cameras. It has a built-in gimbal. It's about the size of like four pens put together. You can hold it in your hand. You can literally, it's called a pocket. You can throw it in your pocket. Um, and it's only a couple hundred bucks. So versus having to buy a multi-thousand dollar camera, you know, work with what you got. Or again, maybe consider some like all, you know, all-inclusive out-of-the-box recording options to give you a couple of different angles, right? To give you a couple of different options. Something to set on a tripod, something to do vlogs with if you want to do that kind of thing. Um, just to get more angles. More angles are always more interesting. So use what you got or really inexpensive stuff to start. That's my tip number one. Tip number two. This one is kind of a jab. So it's kind of funny. You know, a lot of people say less is more. In the world of video for particularly overlanding stuff, more is more. It's, I find many, many times I go on a trip and a good example, and I'll put a tag to it up here, is my Georgia trip. I loved that trip. I really had it in my mind, like what I wanted to do. And I, I tried to shoot as much video as I could. And I kid you not, I got home and I was lucky to crank out that. I think it's like 12 minutes. I, I don't remember exactly how long that video is, but it's not, it's not like it's like I had hours and hours of footage. Like I had to scrape every single second out of that footage that I got. And I was so disappointed in myself that I didn't, you know, put out more cameras or move stuff around or, or make more of an effort to capture stuff. Um, so again, you don't have to be a YouTuber. I'm, I'm saying this from the standpoint of like me trying to make a really interesting video for you guys to watch, right? But it doesn't have to be that crazy, but still, you know, if you don't ever put out your cameras, you're not gonna capture stuff, right? You're gonna miss things. Things are gonna happen that are awesome or interesting, and you're just not gonna have a record of them if you don't have the cameras out. So, you know, make sure that you are cognizant of that. Make sure that you're thinking through, like, what cameras you have. You know, if you have multiple, if you just have your phone, that's fine, too. Get some sort of a cheapy tripod or something. You can get them for really cheap on Amazon or, again, down in the description below. I'll have some links to some of the nicer ones that I use that are still pretty inexpensive. Um, but just get out of the truck. If you come up to, like, a really big, like, water crossing or something, get out drop a tripod, angle your phone towards, you know, the water crossing and go across it and be ready to turn around and come back and get your camera or your phone. Um, but so just shoot as much as you possibly can. Have that dash cam running, have those cameras ready to throw out on a tripod when you go through some cool obstacles um, because you'll, you'll only ever be sad you didn't get enough footage. If you get too much, you can just delete it, right? It's, it's not a problem to have too much. Um, so that's tip number two. All right, so tip number three. Um, plan in advance what you want to shoot. And what I mean by that is, again, you don't have to, there are a couple ways to do this. You don't have to be a YouTuber. You're not going out to do like gear reviews or anything like that. Like I may be, I literally make a list in my Apple notes, you know, doc. I make a doc for like a shot list is what I call it, um, of all the different videos I want to shoot. And in that I even put descriptions and stuff. Like I want drone footage. I want, you know, a shot of the campsite that we find. I want a shot of this and that. I want the wheels and tires. I want, you know what I mean? Like whatever I need to shoot. Again, if you're just trying to do this for your own personal trips, you don't have to get that in depth, but it's still going to help you a lot. It, this kind of ties into the last point, right? Like if you, if you're going to know, you're going to throw out your cameras and you're going to get as much footage as possible. It helps to have a plan, right? Like, um, it's way easier to just like go and then be like, well, I don't really know what I'm going to get into and I don't really know what's going to happen. And, but then that camera sits in your passenger seat. You do the cool stuff and you're like, oh shoot, I should have thrown out my camera for that. Oh shoot. I didn't have a plan for that. Oh. And then even if you do get some footage, when you get home, it gets harder to sort of edit together or, or share with people because it's just, you know, uh, two hours of your dashboard with like four minutes of actually interesting stuff, right? Um, so plan ahead. Think about like, hey, I know that there is going to be water crossings. I know it doesn't have to be super specific, right? Like if you're going to someplace you haven't been before, you don't necessarily have to plan out every obstacle that you're going to challenge or going to go with, but maybe have like a plan for like what cameras, if you have multiple that you want to set out when you hit an obstacle so that you're prepared, right? 
Like if you are dead set on, I want drone footage of this thing, have the drone batteries charged up, have the memory card in it, have it sitting in the seat, and then when you come to an obstacle, throw it up in the air, fly it up to where you want it to be, set it, and then drive across the obstacle, right? Or set up your camera on a tripod with the angle that you want, like, hey, I wanna be really low down in this ditch so that you can see the truck going through the ditch, for example, versus just everything is gonna be from really far away shooting me doing the thing. Right. So think about in advance, what are the shots that you want to do? What are the the things that you want to record? What's the story that you want to tell? Right. Again, you don't have to get super in depth with it. You don't have to like have voiceovers and do all this crazy stuff, but you could have it be a a way like a lot of the ways that I do my trip videos are very chronological. Right. But so like my pre-planning would be something like, you know, record some driving on the highway. Record big landmarks like uh, a couple weeks ago. I went to land between the lakes We went across that big bridge into Louisville in Kentucky I recorded some footage of that because it's interesting. It's cool to see most people know where that is if you're from sort of the Midwest Um, So it kind of helps tell that story and then you know, maybe I want to record my food What did I eat for that for lunch? What did I cook for dinner? How did I do that stuff, right? Where are we camped at? How does the truck look set up, right? Those are the kind of things that I want to capture to share with you guys. But in your case, it may just be like overcoming an obstacle or, you know, the truck flexed out or, you know, anything like that. Just anything to make your truck look cool or anything to sort of like, again, share that experience and capture that experience so that you can, in a very exciting way, show it to people like your friends and family, right? So number four, um, if you're going to go on a trip where you really plan to shoot video, I'm going to say as someone that shoots a lot of video and has gone with a multitude of different people, Take your patient friends. Like there are certain people that want to are okay stopping every few minutes or miles or whatever to to wait for you to set up a camera and then go back and get it and then move it and then set it up again and throw a drone up in the air and fly it and do a shot and come back. You know what I mean? And then there are some that are just not okay with that. They're just going to be tired of it. They're going to be wanting to go and they're going to be tired of you continually stopping. So you want to be considerate, right? You don't want to be annoying everyone and pissing everybody off because you want to shoot video and everybody else wants to wheel, right? So think about that that in advance. If you want to go on more of like an overlanding trip or if you want to go on a wheeling trip, make sure that the people that you're with know, hey, I plan to shoot some video, which means I have to stop a few times. I need to set up some cameras. I need to tear them back down and make sure that they're cool with that, right? Just being considerate. Um, So that's tip number four. Make sure you have patient friends that go with you. All right. So tip five, editing. This is the most daunting. I feel like it was for me for sure. And I feel like it is for a lot of people where they just don't really want to do it, right? It seems really intimidating. Again, you watch those really high quality, professionally made videos. And I'm just like, how do I do all that? How do I make my drone shots look so good? How do I make, you know, my, my camera angles look better? How do I, don't worry about that stuff. It really doesn't matter. The, I think the key is just getting started with it. And then if you enjoy it, you can YouTube videos about how to do certain things. That's pretty much how I've taught myself everything that I know about using Final Cut, which is what I use. So if you're a Mac person, iMovie is a great option and it's free. I started in that. I used it for probably the first six to eight months. Um, And then now I've moved up to Final Cut because I wanted more freedom. I wanted more options. I wanted the ability to add plugins so that I could do cooler transitions and stuff like that. But you don't have to do that. Um, But again, a lot of people... They just take their dash cam footage and they have a two hour long dash cam footage and they throw it up on their Facebook and say, here's my last trip. And again, no knock against that at all. If that's what you got and that's what you're working with, that is perfectly fine. But if you want to do more, if you want to do a little bit more and tell a story, throw it into something like an iMovie, throw it into like a a DaVinci Resolve, I believe is one of the free ones. I've heard it's a little bit intimidating, but again, you can watch some YouTube videos, you can teach yourself just to get to the bare minimum where at least you can cut out like the interesting parts, right? And get rid of all the, the boring stuff change up your angles. Like a lot of the times if I have like one camera set up across a water crossing and one on the side of the truck as I'm going across the water crossing, I'll take both those angles, throw them on top of each other and I'll cut between them, right? Just to keep it more interesting. Just so that you can kind of see, you know, the the point of view sort of thing on like the tire going across the water crossing and then the longer out view so you can see the truck going through the water crossing, right? Um, Again, you don't, I'm not a professional. I have absolutely no training, no background in videography or anything like that. I'm self-taught from YouTube. And that's kind of the point of this, this video slash podcast, right? It's just to at least like impart some really simple tips to you guys that if you want to get into it, don't be nervous about it. Don't be afraid of it because it is really fun and cool to share this stuff. And you never know if you have any interest in making it into a YouTube channel, it could totally happen. I mean, if it happened for me, it could totally happen for you guys for sure. 
So again, let's recap everything that we talked about today. Um, so work with what you got, right? Don't don't feel like you have to wait forever to get that perfect piece of gear or spend thousands of dollars on all this camera gear. Just take your phone with you, take a GoPro with you, and get out there and start making content, and you'll learn really fast. Um, more is more. So make sure that you are shooting as much footage as possible. You're throwing those cameras out. Even if it's not the perfect angle or anything, as long as you got more than one angle, that usually helps. Um, but again, having more to choose from when you get home to, to sort of turn into that story of what that trip was like is always better than less. Um, planning in advance. So again, make sure you plan in advance. Make sure you're thinking through those shots as you go um, or before you go so that you are ready to shoot whatever you need and you've got all the cameras and gear ready to go. Go with patient friends, right? So again, make sure that you are being considerate of your friends. Make sure that they understand, hey, you know, we're going to be shooting video, so it's going to take a little bit longer than normal on some of these trails and take patient friends. Um, and then last, editing. Again, this is super intimidating. It took me a really long time before I ever decided to put anything together. And I'm kind of sad that I waited so long. I should have started earlier and I should have just been playing with it for like a year or two before I ever even posted a video. I should have been playing with editing, shooting stuff with my kids, having a good time shooting video that way, just for fun of family events and stuff like that to kind of get myself geared up to where then I could make the overlanding content. Um, so again, I hope that that stuff's really helpful for you guys. I, I feel like I get a ton of questions from people all the time that are like, what camera do you use? What do you use for that? How do you get started in this? How did you edit? What software do you use, right? So again, just wanted to kind of share some of those tips with you guys and girls so that if you want to just even get the bare bones like basics started just so you can record your trips and share them with friends and family, I hope that that stuff really helps you. Um, so thanks as always for listening. Um, you know, down in the description are links to those products that I mentioned. Again, I hope that those save you some time looking things up. You can just click through those. Um, you know, definitely check out the featured partners as well. All those guys are great. They have a ton of cool overlanding stuff. So if you're looking for anything from rooftop tents to scottles, check out all the, the folks in the description below. Um, you know, if you like this video, if it was helpful, click that like button, click the thumbs up. It really helps, it really does. It shows YouTube that you know you got some value out of this video and, and I appreciate it. Also, there's links to my website and my store. I've got patches and, and uh, stickers and stuff like that related to overlanding. So if you're into that, go check that out as well. Um, but again, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you next time. Yeah.